We are now going to look at different forms of protectionism, and this first PowerPoint on protectionism will focus on tariffs and quotas. The effects of a tariff. A tariff is like a tax on imports. In fact, as a definition, you can say that a tariff is a tax on imports. It's also known as customs duties and are the most common form of trade restrictions. I want to caution you because I've had several um, IB students do a commentary on a tariff that means something else. A tariff can also mean a schedule of prices for a domestic good or service, such as a tariff for cell phone usage, which would lay out all the different sort of price plans um, for the various um, user um, schemes or, or, or plans for um, the cell phone. So we are not examining that type of tariff here. We're looking at a tariff being a tax on import not a schedule of prices for domestic goods. So tariffs may serve two different purposes. One is to protect a domestic industry from foreign competition, which we'll see um, how it reduces imports, and the other is to raise revenue for the government. Now I'd like to focus for a moment on developing countries. They often don't have a sophisticated system of tax collection for, for income tax and for retail sales and corporate tax and so on. So sometimes uh, one of the main sources for tax to raise tax revenue is to tax goods as they come into a country with a tariff because that they can control. It comes through, has to go through do, um, the, um, the, 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 the right sort of offices and things when it comes into, uh, into a country, and that's when they can impose the tariff. So what would be the effect of a tariff if the world price was above the domestic price? So if the world price was above the domestic price, would you be an importer or an exporter? Well, in this case, you would most likely have a comparative advantage in that particular good, and you would export. So a tariff wouldn't be effective at all because we're really only interested in restricting imports, not, um, not when we are an exporter. So it matters only if you are an importer. So let's look at the effect of a tariff. So we're going to draw our first protectionist um, diagram. Before we start with imposing any form of protectionism, whether it's a tariff, quota, subsidy, no matter what, Let's look at first, we'll slow things down. What is happening if we are allowed to import at the world price? This is before any form of protectionism. And remember um, to label the curve the world price equals the world supply curve, or the examiners at the IB will not be happy. Let's bring this down where it intersects with the domestic supply curve. So this is what we are supplying domestically. We'll call it Q1. This is where it intercepts with the domestic demand curve. We'll call this Q4. And I want to emphasize this is what we are demanding at this price of PW, whether it is imports or whether it's domestically produced goods. Because remember, we're assuming that the goods are completely identical, those that are produced domestically and the imports, and the consumer is going to be impartial of whether they buy domestic goods or imports. So before going any further, we'll identify the distance between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Sorry, just having trouble with my pen here. Well, the distance between Q1 and Q4 will be the, sorry about that, here we go, will be <coughs> imports before tariff. Okay, so let's now go ahead and impose a tariff. A tariff is a tax on imports, so we'll take the world supply curve and shift it up by the amount of the tariff. So it's being shifted up by the amount of the tariff. And if, for instance, the tariff were $10, this distance would be the equivalent of $10. So, for instance, the world price could be um, let's say $60 and then with the tariff it's shifted up to 70 just to put some numbers in perspective. This new curve is now the, um, the world um, price of the world supply curve. So world supply curve with tariff. Now we've had a few things now happen. The price has now, so we'll call this PT, the price with tariff, has increased to 
domestic um, suppliers are going to respond by moving along the domestic supply curve and supply more at Q2. So they've now um, increased their production. Domestic consumers, again, uh, whether they're consuming imports or domestic goods, are responding to the higher price by demanding um, quantity demanded is less. We'll call this Q3. And so now, in terms of our domestic demand for imports and, and domestic goods versus our domestic supply, we have shrunk the amount of imports. Um, so the imports have shrunk from Q3 to Q2. Now, in terms of revenue that goes to the government, we know, I'll do this in green, or try to, Sorry, I'm having trouble with my pen today. Let's see if I can get this to respond. There we go. This is the height of the tariff. It's not in green, it's in blue. This is the amount of imports. So all of this must be the tariff revenue that goes to the government. So here it is um, in a graph that's drawn for you. Here's the world price plus tariff after uh, the tariff was imposed. Uh, it has shifted the world supply curve or world price upwards um, to which we're identifying as world price plus tariff. We know that our imports without tariff were from Q1 to Q4, looking at what was happening at the world price. Once the price increased, we know that we were moving along our domestic supply curve and respond to the higher price and are producing more. We know that consumers have moved along their uh, demand curve and are um, demanding less or a quant smaller quantity demanded. And so hence the imports after the tariff or with tariff have shrunk from Q4, Q1 to Q3, Q2 and this is the tariff revenue. Okay. Now, I believe in practice um, to draw the graphs. So let's see if you can draw this on your own. Maybe what you want to do is pause the, um, uh, pause the PowerPoint while you draw um, the tariff graph. And I'll just start it off here. So here's Q1, Q4, I'll do it faster this time. So these are imports before tariff. And remember, we want to identify this before we add any protectionism on at all. Okay, so we know what's happening if we were allowed to uh, trade. Once we put a tariff on, it raises the world price by the amount of the tariff. So world price with tariff. We'll call that PT. We know that we are now supplying more domestically at Q2. We know that we are demanding less domestically at Q3. And this becomes imports after tariff. We know that this was the amount of the tariff. We know this is the amount of the imports after tariff. So this rectangular box must be the tariff revenue that goes to the government. So the effects of a tariff. So let's look at um, what happens to domestic quantity supplied. Well, we know that domestic quantity supplied is going to go up because the domestic suppliers are responding to the higher price with the tariff. And it goes up from Q1 to Q2. You can see that on the graph. 
What happens to domestic quantity demanded? Well, consumers are responding to the higher price and their quantity demanded has gone down. So QD has gone down and it's gone down from Q4 to Q3. If you uh, label on the graph the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 in the order that I've shown you, um, I think you'll find it easier when you're studying for exams and tests and things um, in terms of what's happening uh, when you're asked to what's happened with domestic quantity supplied and domestic quantity demanded and so on. What happens to the quantity of imports? What well, falls? And it falls from, so initially we head from Q4 to Q1 and it falls to Q3 to Q2. The impact on consumers, well the price we know it went up, it went up to PW plus T, also known as price with tariffs. The quantity bought is Q3 instead of Q4. And I do want to emphasize again, the quantity can be a combination, in this case it is, it's a combination of domestically produced goods and imports. So the effects of the tariff and the impact on producers. Well, we know that the price has gone up. And with a higher price, we've got PW plus T instead of PW. And we know that producers will respond to a higher price. So QS will go up and we'll have them that they will sell Q2, now sell and produce instead of Q1, so that's increased. The impact on domestic employment, well, that's gone up. Impact on the government, well, they, um, the government gains tariff revenue. which is the shaded box. And the, um, looking at it from the viewpoint of having increased employment, they'll be paying less in unemployment benefits. So is a tariff a progressive or regressive tax? Well, um, a wealthy person and a lower income person, if they buy the same good, they pay the same tax. And we know that in terms of the, that whatever that uh, tax amount would be, would be a higher per, um, percentage of income for the low income person versus the wealthy um, consumer. So it is indeed a regressive tax. And so it creates more unequal income distribution. Now, because um, we are dealing in international trade, we want to look at uh, impact on exporting countries. So who is exporting their goods? So the price received, I want to emphasize this, they still receive PW. They, they don't receive the higher price of PW plus tariff or the, the tariff price. Sorry, again, the pen. So P, W, so the, the world price. Now what's happened to their quantity exported? Well, it's less. So if they're importing, excuse me, if they're exporting less and yet the price stays the same, impact on export revenue means that it falls. So in terms of, so they are worse off. Um, so countries do react when another country imposes a tariff. Um, and, and often they get into a trade dispute or into to poor um, relations because of the negative effect on the exporting country. So let's look at it from the standpoint of the global allocation of resources. So we have consumption is down. And we have a shift away from more efficient foreign producers towards more inefficient domestic producers. So shift away from more efficient foreign producers towards more 
inefficient domestic producers. So let's look at the impact on consumer and producer surplus. Um, so here's the graph, the imports without the tariff being Q1, Q4 minus Q1, imports with tariff being Q3 minus Q2. So let's look at the impact on the consumer surplus before the tariff. I'm sorry, next, next slide for this. So referring to um, the, the previous diagram that you have, so the impact on the consumer surplus, so before the tariff, We're looking at A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. And if you need to see that on the diagram, um, pause this video and go back and see the very large triangle that the consumer surplus is enjoying at the world price. After the tariff, and the price shifts up to PW plus T, we have it much smaller, so just A plus B, so definitely worse off. Impact on the producer surplus at the world price, which is pretty competitive, before the tariff, the producer surplus is just that little area G. After the tariff, When the price increases to um, world price plus tariff, we have C plus G, so they are better off. The government revenue gain is the box E, but we also know with taxes, we usually have deadweight loss. So we can think of that of the loss of total consumer and producer surplus. We've got two deadweight losses, and they're going to be the small triangles to the left and to the right of the tariff revenue box. So we're going to have D plus F. Now D is because we've got increased production by inefficient producers. And we have F, because of the higher price, we have decreased consumption of consumers. So once a government imposes a tariff, we know that the domestic price exceeds the world price. It goes up by the world price plus tariff. We know that the tariff causes a deadweight loss because the tariff is like a ta type of tax and it distorts incentives and pushes the allocation of scarce resources away from the optimum. And you can refer back to the previous slide to see those two areas of the deadweight loss and that one comes from inefficient production and one comes from reduced consumption. And there is deadweight loss from the overproduction of a good and a deadweight loss from underconsumption of a good. Now let's look at an import quota. In the case of Canada, the reason we've got um, the, the cheese curds and the milk and the cheese and, and, and yogurt and so on is because um, we have at least historically um, had a quota on, on imported dairy products. So an imported quota is a legal limit to the quantity of a good that can be imported over a particular time period, typically a year. Now, I also want to be cautious because um, you want to make sure that you don't go ahead and do a, a, an economics commentary on a different kind of quota, which we are not examining in international trade. So just like tariff, tariff has a domestic um, use and it has a use in international trade. Same thing with import quota. A quota can also mean a domestic allotment of something such as a monthly milk quota assigned to dairy farmers, where they're not allowed to produce more than whatever their quota amount is. 
So once again, we are not examining that type of quota here. The impacts of quotas are similar to the impacts of tariffs, except that the quota rents, so just like the tariff, um, we're going to call this this time quota rent, goes to the exporters. Now, typically it goes to the exporters, but some, in some circumstances it can also go to the importers. So we'll, um, at any rate, uh, keep in mind the term quota rents. Now, I don't know if this is grouchy cat. Um, I suspect it might be. So before we go any further, let's draw our first quota graph together. And just like with a tariff, let's look at the impact before we impose the tariff. And once again, I want to encourage you to refer to the supply curve as the world price. So PW, which also equals the world supply curve. Please put both so we don't upset the IB examiners. Let's bring this down, this quantity that we're supplying domestically, and call it Q1. Let's look at the amount of domestic demand, whether it is for imports or for uh, domestically produced goods, and call it Q4. And once again, just like with the tariffs, Q4 minus Q1 are the imports without tariffs, I mean, excuse me, without quotas, without the quota. Um, so we're now ready to examine what happens with a quota. And once again, if you, um, you label the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 in the same manner that, that I am on these diagrams, you'll see that there, there definitely is a pattern to, for instance, it's once again Q4 minus Q1, which is the imports before or without the quota. So the quota graph tends to throw a number of students. What's going to happen now is that we've got another supply curve coming down here. So I'll just draw part of it. This is the amount of the quota. So the quota is not a dollar amount. It is, for instance, if this was cloth and our quota amount was to allow 10 million um, meters of imported um, uh, um, cloth to come in from overseas, the quota would, would have a horizontal distance of 10 million. So we're going to call this domestic, um, domestic supply with quota. So what that means is we can look at the domestic supply curve, which we had before, which um, we understand very well from micro. But now we've got a new supply curve that's a combination of our domestic supply curve plus the allowed imports. So it's shifted to the right by the amount of the uh, allowed imports. So I'm going to continue this, this, this supply curve of the domestic supply with quota right down to the wor world price and the world supply curve. Notice that um, the, these are um, parallel lines, so in terms of math, we're dealing with two transversals. The distance for the quota that we originally drew here is going to be the same amount that is here. This is the allowed imports. We can no longer, from this point, go to the right and import more. We no longer have the perfectly horizontal supply curve because we've limited, in the case of the cloth, the cloth to 10 million meters. Um, so we can no longer go to the right. But if I asked you, can we import less than the 10 mil, mil, million uh, meters at the world price? The answer would be yes. So we move the domestic supply curve down here and then to the left where we're allowed to import less. If the price were to drop below the world price, would anyone sell to us? Well, once again, knowing that we have infinitely, um, not maybe infinitely, but each player is small relative to the rest of the world, they're not going to sell to us. They'll sell um, elsewhere to other countries. So then we pick up at this point our domestic supply curve where we have domestic producers who would have been willing and able to produce at a price lower than PW. So that is, in essence, what the um, quota curve looks like throws a lot of students, so if you need to repeat um, the, um, the, the description, please go back over this slide. Then it gets a, just a, a little bit more complicated in terms of what's happening. If we look at where um, 
excuse me, sorry. We look at the domestic demand curve and where it intersects our new supply curve. So we're looking at the domestic demand curve and where it intercepts our new uh, supply curve, and that's going to be here. Because we've limited how much we can bring in, we're not going to um, we're not going to have the domestic price as PW anymore, because then we would demand Q4 and we'd have a shortage. So we need to bring this over from that point of intersection, which was here. So again, where the domestic demand curve meets the new supply curve, and we'll call this P with quota, no, P with a small q, um, with quota. So now that we've established the new price that's going to exist in the economy, we need to look at our old supply curve, where we've shifted along our old supply, our, excuse me, domestic supply curve to this point here, bring this down and call this Q2. So in response to the higher price, then, then um, they were receiving before at PW, their quantity supplied will increase um, because of the law of supply. As price goes up, quantity supplied goes up. And according to the law of demand, consumers will now demand a smaller quantity demanded because the price again has increased from PW to PQ, called this Q3. This is now the imports after quota. Okay, so we know that this is the, let's see if I can get this in maybe green. We know that this is the amount that the price has increased by. We know that this is the amount of import. So this box here is now known as the quota rent. If it's the exporter that's holding the quotas, the money will go to them. If it's the importers that are holding the quota, which can happen, it will go to, to whoever is importing the good. So let's look at this. This, this drawing might be a little clearer. Um, the reason it says VER is uh, we're going to see in an, another PowerPoint something called voluntary export um, restraints. And it's a, virtually the same thing as a quota in terms of how it operates, but just ignore that for now. So the thick blue line is the new domestic supply curve with the extra quantity that's allowed um, to occur, that's uh, allowed to, that is permitted. The supply curve is parallel to the domestic, uh, domestic supply curve all the way down until we hit the world price. At the world price, we can't go along to the right because we're being restricted by the amount of the quota, but we did agree that we can import less. So we're going to go to the left along the, um, uh, along the world price um, curve. Once the price were to fall below um, the world price, no one would export to us and we'd only pick up the domestic supply curve. Once again, we can look at imports without quota being Q4 minus Q1 and imports with quota being Q3 minus Q2. And the quota rents is the shaded green box. So for practice, let's do this ourselves. Before we look at any form of protectionism, let's look at Q1, Q4, I'll pick up the speed on this. We know that this is imports before quota. And again, you can always pause this slide and try to draw this on your own and come back to see if you've drawn it correctly. We're going to have a um, a new supply curve that's the domestic supply curve plus the quota which is going to take us down to the world price. At the world price we can't import more than what the quota is allowing us to but we can import less if we wanted to and once we go below the world price only the domestic suppliers would supply to us um, because any exporters would export to other countries. So yours will look much better because you're going to use a ruler but this thick line is the quota graph. Okay, so this um, physical amount is the amount of the quota. So this is supply, domestic supply with quota. 
In terms of what price we're going to charge, we're going to look at the new supply curve with the old uh, domestic demand curve at this point. We'll bring this across, and this is P with quota, and oh, this was P world price. And we know that this becomes our new quantity supplied, this becomes our new quantity demanded, and this is imports after quota. And in terms of the quota rents, it's going to be that rectangular box. So the quota causes the price of the good to rise to price with quota. For the higher price, of course, we have domestic producers being better off, but domestic consumers are worse off. And we've looked at this before. Would you um, ever have a two-tiered system where you would have a domestic price that would be higher than, let's say, the imports? Well, that would make no sense because we can. Um, people would buy just the imports. So the pr again, the domestic price um, rises to the price with quota. So what happens to domestic quantity supplied? Well, with a higher price, we know that QS is going to go up. And it goes up from Q1 to Q2. So again, if you've numbered the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 the same um, as I have, you're going to see that the pattern in terms of even the numbers is the same as the tariff. What happens to domestic quantity demanded? Well, with a higher price, we know quantity demanded will go down, and it falls from Q4 to Q3. And what happens to the quantity of imports? Well, this was the whole point of a tariff, was to limit the amount of imports, so it falls. And again, from Q4 to Q1 to a smaller amount of Q3 to Q2. The impact on consumers. Well, we know that the price has gone up to price with quota. And quantity bought, we know that's gone down to Q3 instead of Q4. And I want to emphasize that the quantity bought is a combination of imports and domestically produced goods, and that the consumers are indifferent as to whether they're buying imports or not. They're just um, solely being influenced by the change in price. So let's look at the impact on producers. We know that the price has gone up to PQ. We know that quantity supplied has gone up to Q2. So overall, we know that their revenue, and this is, this is domestic producers, has gone up. The d impact on domestic employment, of course, it's gone up because of um, the increase in, um, in output. And um, so the impact on the government. Well, we have either the importers, the exporters, or the government gain quota revenues. It depends on how it's set up because you can charge for quotas. Um, the government could charge for each quota and hence raise some revenues. So the impact on income distribution, again, a quota is like a, um, a regressive tax. And so, so it's regressive. And so again, it worsens income distribution or the equality of in income distribution. Or the impact on the, um, sorry, impact on the exporting country. So again, the price received is PW. Quantity export goes down, so revenue goes down. One of the exceptions can be is if the um, exporting countries are able to keep the quota rents themselves, 
then you would have um, the, the price actually going up, but definitely the quantity exported going down. And depending on how sensitive um, the importing country is to the increase in price, the revenue could go down or up. That this is when we would have to look at elasticity of demand for the exports. Import uh, impact on um, export revenues is most likely going to be down. Global allocation of resources, where we have less consumption. And once again, we have a shift from more efficient to less efficient producers. So again, uh, just like with tariffs, let's look at the effect on consumer and producer surplus. So here is the diagram um, with all of the triangles and boxes having been allocated with letters. And let's go and answer the following slide. Okay, so the consumer surplus before the quota. That was A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F, just like we saw before when we were looking at tariffs. The consumer surplus after the tariff, I mean, excuse me, after the quota shrinks, so consumers are worse off. If we look at the producer surplus before the quota, just G. And after the quota, we have G plus C, so producers are better off. Exporting country um, or the government receives E, and the deadweight loss due to inefficiencies in production and reduced consumption is D plus F. And again, if you wanted further explanations as to D and F, D relates to the inefficiency in produ production where uh, more inefficient producers are producing more. And the reduced consumption because of the increased price is F. And again, if you go back to the tariff slide on, uh, on this, you, you'll get a more detailed explanation.